Hello everyone. Hope you're doing well. And as always, if you are new to my channel, I would request you to subscribe to my channel so that you shall be able to watch all the latest engineering videos in my channel. Thanks. So in this uh, video, this is basically the part two of the Mohan Strain Circle Theory uh, video that I have just uploaded. So in this video, we will try to uh, uh, solve a numerical based on the theoretical concepts that we have learned in the previous video. So uh, let's start this numerical. It's a very good uh, solved example of R.C. Hibbler. And uh, the problem says the state of plane strain at a point is represented on an element having components epsilon x as minus 300 uh, micro, epsilon y is minus 100 micro, and gamma xy is 100 micro. You need to determine the state of strain on an element oriented 20 degrees clockwise from the reported position. Okay. So the reported position is this epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma x, y is 100 micro at an angle of theta equal to 0. And uh, the orientation of the element is being given 20 degrees clockwise. It's very important. Clockwise uh, from the reported position. Okay. And you always remember clockwise rotation is always going to be negative. Anti-clockwise is always going to be positive. So first of all, what we will do is uh, we have to look at the values epsilon x and epsilon y. They are both negative values. So we have to uh, uh, basically uh, make our origin and we have to consider our origin when we are uh, drawing it on the graph paper very accurately because both the values are negative. So our origin will move on the left side on the extreme or extreme right side on the extreme right side. And this is our origin. Okay. And then we have to calculate the center of our circle we can very easily calculate by calculating the average strain and it is basically minus 300 minus 100 divided by 2 micro and the end result is minus 200 micro so here it is this is the origin we have to first plot the point of uh, the center point of the circle remember there is no circle over here okay so we have to plot uh, this is our origin this is our origin and this is going to be the center plot uh, point of the circle from this point to the center this C, this is basically C. So the C is basically, uh, you can calculate from the origin as uh, 200, but since it's a negative side of the X axis, it's minus 200. Then basically, we also need to calculate uh, uh, the radius of this circle. If you want, we can, but before calculating the radius, uh, if you want, we can also basically calculate the other point because this at C point we have to calculate A also. We can calculate A very easily. Uh, the first point of A is basically uh, given as epsilon x dash epsilon x is minus 300 micro and gamma x y is 100 micro. Okay, so it is going to be very simple. From here we are going to select uh, minus 300 micro as the x axis from here on the x axis from here we will move and uh, we will move uh, a distance 300 okay right now there is no circle being drawn okay just remember 300 so this is the point uh, you can see the arrow this is the point which is minus 300 okay and then gamma xy is equals to 100 micro and as i told you in the theory when you will plot uh, the shear strain uh, on the more circle it will be gamma xy by 2 so it will be 100 micro so 100 micro means, sorry, 100 divided by 2 will be 50 micro. So from here, we have to move, uh, uh, since it's 50, when 50 is going to be positive downwards, so this is going to, be going to move uh, 50 units uh, downwards. So when we move 50 units downward, this is the point A we have reached. Okay. So you have one point here. There's no circle here. Just remember, there is one point A and there's another point C, the center of the circle. You can join these two points. Once you will join these two points, you will get the radius. Once the radius is there, now what you have to do is uh, you have to basically open your compass and basically draw this uh, Mohor's uh, strain circle. Now, once this has been done, uh, you know, uh, you can basically, uh, this is the radius. And if you want, you can uh, theoretically calculate the radius of this circle, which is going to be epsilon x square minus epsilon x minus epsilon y by 2 the whole square plus gamma x y by 2 the whole square all in the square under the square root uh, into uh, 10 to the minus 6 of the macro. Uh, 
So when you calculate this radius, you will get 111.8 uh, micro. Okay, this is the value of the radius of this more strain segment. Okay, so just remember that this is the point. This CA is the first point. Okay, now you can see that uh, they say that you have to move 20 degrees clockwise. So since 20 degrees clockwise on the element, on the more strain circle, it will be double. So from here, you can put your uh, protector on this AC and you can measure an angle of uh, 40 degrees. So when you measure it, you can see that uh, the, the angle of 40 degrees from here is this point, this point P. This point P is basically uh, at 40 degrees. Okay. So if you put measure your angle and you uh, this will be 40 degrees then put the point here you put your dot here and you connect c with p okay you connect c with p and this is going to be the 40 degrees okay once this is being calculated this is calculated as 40 degrees now you should also be interested in uh, the other values of your uh, system okay like for example if you want to calculate uh, this uh, phi if you want to calculate this phi you can very easily calculate as tangent theta as uh, the vertical value is 50 okay 50 and uh, in the denominator you will write uh, as 300 minus 200 from here to here it is uh, 300 and from here the center is 200 so you get this length and the vertical is basically uh, depth is 50 so your theta your phi comes out to be equal to 26.57 so this phi is 26.57 and this angle from here to is 40. So if you want to calculate this this angle, uh, which is you can say C uh, uh, th uh, this point to P, okay, this angle from this angle to this this small angle, which is called as the side, it will be just simply uh, uh, 40 degrees minus 26.57. So this psi will be this angle psi will be 13.43 degrees. So once uh, this is being calculated, now uh, you can basically very easily calculate your uh, uh, angles which is called as the principal strain orientation angles for theta p1 theta p2 and shear strain orientations you can very easily calculate uh, this is remember your data this ca is your data from here if you go uh, backward it will be your uh, 2 theta s1 okay from here if you go backward it will be 2 theta s1 and you can make it as counted as uh, plus 180 will give you 2 theta s2 and if you want and remember there are many ways to uh, move here you can also move uh, from here uh, from this point to you can add this uh, value of uh, what is for 26.57 plus you can add uh, 90 to it okay you can add 90 to it you can go in this way also but when you will go in this way it will be basically going in the negative uh, towards the negative uh, clockwise direction which is the negative one okay so it will be basically your uh, principal uh, shear strain orientation angles from here it will be uh, if, if i move like this it will be uh, 2 theta s1 and if i move from here it will be from here i can move 180 it will be 2 theta s2 positive and moving anti clockwise if you want to calculate your principal strain orientations theta p theta p1 theta p2 from here if we move for negative 26.57 this angle will be your uh minus 2 theta p1 okay you can say whatever this, this angle will be uh if i assume this point as uh, p1 so it can be uh, 2 theta uh uh it, it will be 2 theta p1 and i want the angle of, over this one if i want this angle i can move here plus 180 so it will be uh minus 2 theta p2 so this way minus 2 theta p1 plus 180 it will give you uh, 2 theta p2 will be equal to you can say it as uh, 26.57 plus 18 which is like this so and you want to calculate uh, and they said you need to calculate the strains state of strains on an element oriented 20 degrees state of strains also you calculate it out okay so by state of strains is means when oriented 20 degrees they are interested in the epsilon x dash and the epsilon y dash okay they are basically interested in the uh, values of the epsilon x dash and the epsilon y dash okay so if you want uh, we can calculate uh, epsilon x dash uh, very easily uh, it is basically uh, again if this point p this point p if you project it downwards uh, you can say this point p over here is projected downwards it will be this point 
remember it is not this point not the principal strain epsilon 1 it is not this it is going to be just uh, before that it will be this point okay so if you want to calculate this point and this is our origin you can very easily calculate it with, it, you can calculate this distance from here to here which is 200 and you know this radius and you know this angle so it will be the radius which is the 111.8 and this angle will be uh, the cosine of uh, 13.43 okay so if you look uh, how he has done it uh, you can see it's 200 plus 111.8 for sine of 13.43 micro and since we are moving on the negative x uh, they have put, it, put a minus sign here so you calculate your epsilon x like that and if you want uh, to calculate your uh, gamma x dash uh, y dash if you want to calculate your gamma x dash y dash uh, it will be very easily calculated there you will use using the same formula it will be the basically uh, again if you want to calculate this one it will be this uh, radius this radius and sine of 13.43 but remember if we are at this point it will be negative gamma x dash y dash y2 if we are at this point uh, of, of q this it will be positive because gamma x, x dash y dash 2 is positive below and on the top it is negative okay? and you can see it from the figure also calculation uh, they have said gamma x, x dash y dash y2 is uh, minus uh, uh, radius sine of 13.43 micro and so gamma x dash y dash uh, yeah, basically by 2 will be minus 52 micro okay so it, you are on the top side and if you want to calculate uh, your epsilon y dash epsilon y dash how will you calculate your epsilon y dash you will basically calculate your epsilon y dash which is this point okay okay this is if you remember it is not at the edge it is slightly before this edge okay so if this is say epsilon uh, p1 this is epsilon p2 your uh, principal uh, normal strains so it is just be, uh, before uh, after this point okay this, remember this is very important don't get confused so it is somewhere here so once when it is here you can basically be calculating it as from here to here basically you can uh, calculating the length so what you do is basically you you basically say uh, minus 200 and uh, then you basically plus 111 the radius for sine of 13.43 okay so you look what is he saying is from here to here the point is uh, minus 200 and basically you want to have uh, this uh, point this point so you will say minus 200 and plus the radius uh, times that for sine of 13.43 this thing so minus this plus the cosine of this will give you actually the uh, length from here to here okay so this point somewhere which is this point and called as epsilon y dash so this is how you basically uh, calculate uh, your uh, problems okay uh, solve your problem uh, theoretically on the mohor strain circuit okay so if you want uh, we can basically also pursue the same numerical on the uh, mohor's uh, msd okay so understand the same concept of this problem okay so we shall continue in the next video to solve the same problem so that our concept uh, of uh, principal uh, strain orientations and shear strain orientations and uh, what is called as your maximum uh, shear strains and absolute maximum shear strains is clear okay so i thank you all and you have a, a very good day thanks a lot